Hi, it's Jim Pamplin. I'm here with Sugar, and we've arrived in Margate at the house that Jeremy and Joshua Mathis rehab. We'll go in in just a moment. So Sugar approves of the backyard, that's for sure. Hey, Joshua, here we are way north in Margate. So how's it going today? You ready to close? Ready to close. Tomorrow's closing day. Closing day means payday, so we're excited about it. All right, so when did you pick this beauty up? Um, we bought it at the auction on December the 3rd of last year. What kind of auction? It was the foreclosure auction. The sellers actually called us the day of the auction and said, hey guys, our house is going to the auctions. Can you help us out? And we was able to line up the financing um, and we was able to get it, get it done. So here we are in May. Uh, you bought it for what and you're selling it for what? We paid $215,000 215, for it and uh, we're selling it for three eighty five. dollars Oh man, oh man, and that's, that's about the market in this area, right? Yes, yes. All right, so how many showings did you have? Um, it was, you know, we, because of the corona, we thought it was going to slow us down, but we listed it on a Thursday. We had 21 offers, I'm sorry, we had 21 showings um, from Thursday to Sunday, and we got several offers on the property. It actually sold over asking price. All right, man, and the appraisal obviously came in, and the financing yep. has been no issue. Yep, the appraisal came in uh, at above asking price, the financing. We actually, from contract to closing, it's been 15 days. Congratulations, and we'll catch you on the other side. Thank you. So, Joshua, it's not the next day. It's five days later. Welcome to the real world of rehabbing, right? What happened? So, we were actually scheduled to close um, last week. And, you know, we got the clear to close. The lender said that, hey, everything is ready to go. But the day of closing, um, the buyer had an issue with some of their funds. The lender was not able to source some of their funding. So uh, we had to, de uh, to delay for five days. Well, that's not really an uncommon problem. It, it happens. It happens a lot. Everybody's got to tie things up. And buyers... You know, this it's something they do only once or twice in their lives, so they're not as yep. speed up as we are, right? Yep. You know, in our in our video, we discussed something. You mentioned something. You said uh, the sellers called us right before the auction, so that means you had reached out to the sellers before you bought the house, right? Correct. So, um, you know, at the beginning of November. We knew that the house was scheduled to go to auction in December when we purchased it. So we reached out to um, we reached out to the sellers in November and they didn't want to sell. They said that, hey, you know, we'll figure it out, we'll find the funds. But on the day of the auction, um, they reached back out and they said, Hey guys, you know, we didn't figure it out and we need your help. Can you guys help? Oh, that's cool. They call you the day of the auction. The day of the auction. You think you were the first people they called? Um, to be honest, I don't even know. We didn't ask, but you know, when they called us back, you know, we knew this was a great area to buy in and we said, Hey, you know, we, we're going to figure this out. So, so it did, you, even though you bought it the day of the auction, right? So you made a closing that day. Is that right? And funded it. Yes. Yeah. But it still went to auction, right? Yep. It actually went to auction. So one thing that we learned that there is a redeem period, um, and the, the property actually sold at auction in the morning, but we were able to um, redeem it later that afternoon. Later that afternoon. So we'll have to have another little session on the redemption period because it really just may be the one day, but we'll talk about that later. But that's cool. That that shows that you had a good deal, you recognized it, and you lined up everything in one day. And that's how you make money in this business because you bought it for like, what, 215 We said that in the video, right? Yeah, we paid 215 for it. Yep. And it was, you know, when we looked at the comps, it was worth you know, anywhere from 380 to 400. So we say, man, this is a no brainer. No brainer. You know, I drove around that area and uh, there's not much for sale. So let's go to a couple of before pictures here now. <clears throat> you know, Joshua, in our materials, there's a nice little thing on how to take pictures. And I think one of the cardinal rules is you don't put the owners in the picture. And there he is right there. <laughs> Sh Sugar was looking for that darn dog. No, I'm just kidding. But, uh, but you know, let's go to, to the to the living room. Well, okay. What was going on there with the with the tile? Um, so they were actually trying to hide it because they thought that they would that would not uh they were trying to hide that so um because they think or they thought we wouldn't want to buy it. And I said, No, this is perfect. You know, these are the type of houses that we want to buy. So actually 
you know, where it's all patched up at, there was no towel behind it. All the towel had, you know, fallen off. So you saw this in November then, I take it, long before you bought it. Was that the day oh, you bought it? No, we, we, we saw it the day of, the day of the auction. <laughs> okay, all right, yeah. good. Um, so now here we are in the living room and kitchen. We'll, we'll get through that. So I've seen a few of your rehabs, right? And yes. And you kind of have a pattern here. How, how does this work? Oh, um, for us, we keep it very simple. As you guys know, we do a lot of rehabs. And, um, you know, early on when we first started rehabbing, we would change it up and, you know, try to, you know, make every house different. But then that gets complicated and you can't scale when you try to make things different. Right. And also, you know, before contractors would always assume. So you take the guessing out of it. And now we kind of do almost, you know, we do all the houses kind of the same. <clears throat> Are you able to get the same guys in there for the most part? Yep, for the most part, yep. So how long did it take you on this one? I mean, it, you know, it's certainly in livable condition, right? But you just had to redo things. Yes, um, and actually we were going to hotel it. We were just going to close on it and put it back on the market. Uh, we had some issues with getting the sellers out of the property, but um, three, four months later, they actually got out. And, um, you know, when we got in there to see, you know, because the house looks one way, when you buy but then when you really go in and have to say okay what do we want to do it looks completely different right. and we just decided to say hey man let's you know let's spend a little bit more money and um get it to let's get it looking better so so let this be a, a word of caution to people you have to deal with human beings in these situations and they called you they needed their help you helped them and, and then they squatted and that happens yep, yep. you, you got to be prepared for all kinds of things this is why okay. You, know, you have to know what you're doing. You have to count your pennies and, and know where your money's coming from, right? Definitely. Yeah. So I drove around, as I said, in this area, and there wasn't a lot for sale, a great area. So do you think you got a lot of visitors because the, the demand is pent up or people, I, I don't know. I mean, was it because of your beautiful rehab? What do you think is going on in the market? I mean, you guys had no problem selling it and getting the money. No problem at all. Um, I think the retail market is still strong. Buyers are still buying. It actually sold over asking price. And we only, we only, you know, I mean, you can say we did a full rehab, but as you can see here in this picture, we didn't pressure wash the outside of the house. We didn't even paint the outside. Right. Um, it was a lot of things that we did not do. Um, um, because one, we knew that this, mark, that this uh, where the house was located, it's a strong retail market and there were no active comps. So we knew that, you know, with our experience, we knew that, hey, you know, we should get a lot of demand for this property once we list it. Yeah. So they, they sat in there for a few months uh, from the pictures, the earlier pictures, I could see it was around Christmas, but so they sat in there a few months. And so from start of rehab to finish, approximately what time were you? How, how long was oh, that? Oh, uh, three weeks. Oh, three weeks. Okay. Yeah, I want to, I want to show people one of my favorite things here, the next slide. I know this looks boring, but I love a good garage, man. I, I love a good garage. This is, this is a really, to me as a buyer, this would, this would do a lot for me. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's amazing what paint does to a house. <laughs> yeah. Well, listen, Joshua and uh, you and Jeremy are in a picture somewhere in this. Uh, I appreciate your time. I appreciate you sharing the success with us. It's especially important right now for people. What, what's your advice for new investors right now? Um, just one, find a mentor. Um, you know, that's number one. And number two, you just got to work hard and be consistent with it. Um, you know, when we started with you guys in the, in the mentor program, you remember we would call you every day, oh, yeah. um, every day calling, asking questions and just trying to figure it out. So like I said, finding a mentor, getting around the right people, working hard and just being consistent. All right. Listen, Joshua, thank you and good luck. And uh, let's move on to another project, man. Hey, thank you. All right. Bye-bye.